Chapter 3 Creating Culture For individuals, character is destiny. For organizations, culture is destiny. Tony Shea I remember writing a big, hairy, audacious goal of making $25 million in sales. Real Truck was betting on focusing on creating an outstanding company culture to help us get there. In addition, I set forth an even greater goal of reaching $100 million in sales by 2025. We bet the company could reach this goal mostly due to the company culture we were developing. It was a long bet, but one that paid off. We not only reached the $25 million goal quickly, but we also reached the $50 million goal way before we thought, and reached the $100 million goal many years before that timeline. Culture develops with or without guidance. If you want a better outcome, especially in business, I recommend you develop a culture strategy and provide guidance. Otherwise, its natural development will lean towards being fear-based, ruthless, competitive, and cutthroat. Culture is everywhere. Sports teams and their fans have it. Companies and divisions have it. Offices and departments have it. Countries, states, cities, and blocks have it. Families, churches, schools, and classrooms have it. Big and small groups of people have it. It's everywhere. Culture is defined as the attitudes and behaviors characteristic of a group. Whether the group realizes it or not, decisions and policies are influenced by this. Those attitudes and characteristics are driven by the pervasive principles that are adopted by the group, whether formally or informally. This can develop spontaneously without much thought or attention. It can be plagued with inconsistencies in policies and practices because of warped values that are based on who or what level of status a given person or group of people have in that culture. Like a company that has a policy of no alcohol at company events, except sales reps who do it while golfing with customers because that's different, or executives who can also drink at a company party but no one else can. Many employee handbooks will get your eyes pretty dilated trying to understand all the exceptions to the rule and which employee what does and doesn't apply. They tend to try to police the exception rather than reward the rule. All seem to favor those who have authority because for their more important work, they require company policies be more flexible for the sake of good business practice. These attitudes drive the behavior. Therefore, the right principles need to be in place in order to encourage the behaviors desired by a company. If you want to create a family-friendly culture, you need to have principles in place that support this. Then you can evolve to having things such as daycare, flexible work hours, and family activities like picnics. These benefits let everyone working within and outside the company know that family is a strong value everyone shares within the workplace. However, if you don't have a core value or guiding principle embedded into the company culture around family, then you may see those benefits, but there will be many exceptions and inconsistencies around them. Profit motive, managing the exception, and fear will make their way into company policy and attitudes. If you can get the principles right, the right attitudes are created, and the right behaviors will follow. A company culture will spontaneously occur and evolve over time, moving in the direction those principles encourage. If you don't have core values or guiding principles, those behaviors and attitudes will evolve over time towards each individual's interpretation of coworker and company ideas, attitudes, and actions. You can either stand by and hope a positive culture will develop with positive principles on its own, or you can purposefully create and nourish the culture. Years ago, the New Orleans Saints were caught with the bounty scandal, or hashtag bounty gate. It had become totally acceptable for coaches to encourage their players to hurt players from other teams, and was even incentivized with praise and financial bonuses. They had created an internal culture that made this attitude and subsequent behavior acceptable, and they encouraged it. 
it was amplified with social, emotional, and financial incentives, all just part of the job. Once word got out that the saints were doing this, social shame took over. No one blamed it on culture, but that's what it was. Clearly, winning at any cost was a principle the team was operating on. That developed attitudes that were accepted by the organization, and then the behavior of those attitudes followed. Fortunately, there were heavy sanctions placed upon the team, its managers, players, and coaches. A year later, the sanctions were lifted because the NFL commissioner determined the fault was not with the players, but with the coaches who created and promoted this destructive culture. So it's just good business to make sure the principles or core values a company lives by are in line with the mission and objectives of the company. Normally, most company mission statements are pretty good. But if the incentives are not aligned and the principles a company lives by not clearly defined, then you are sure to have some Wild West policies and practices take place. And there may be little scrutiny from employees who may not speak up if you don't have a, a value around open and honest communication because the fear of losing their job will be greater than doing the right thing. When Real Truck was only a couple of years old, there was an incident with a customer service rep. He put a customer on hold, turned, and told me a shipping carrier had run over the package and he didn't know what he should tell the customer. In hindsight, he was really asking me to set the direction for handling such calls. To me, the answer was obvious. Tell the customer what really happened. We are very sorry about this. We are making arrangements to ship out another package. We will expedite it, and please let us know if there's anything else we can do to make this right. The rep was looking to me for guidance, and my decision would set the stage for other similar interactions with clients. Would he have lied if I told him to? He must have his own principles he lives by, his own set of values, but at work, he may be willing to flex them based on what he sees and is told, because he may fear that if he goes against the establishment, it could cost him his job. At that time, our culture wasn't clear and our principles were not established, and therefore every decision employees made was based on their perception, accurate or not, of what they felt I would do or what I would think was best for the company. Ours was an unofficial series of perceived rules and sometimes written policies stacked on top of each other for handling situations as they came up. This makes for a lot of inconsistencies in how employees, partners, and customers are treated. For example. At one time, the TSA had a policy that, in order to take a beverage through security, they would have the traveler take a drink of it. Seems like a good policy. Well, its execution was all over the board. Mothers with breast milk would be told they had to take a drink of it or throw it away by some TSA agents. Other agents saw the flaw in the policy and found workarounds. If you were a mother traveling with a bottle of breast milk, you never knew what you were going to get. This is where having guiding principles can help. Guiding principles can prevent issues like this from happening or bring issues like this to the surface quickly and find faster solutions for them. Clearly, the TSA's principles need to be around security, passenger safety, accuracy, and communication. And those principles might be way different than what you might find at a company like Realtruck, which has a very different mission. At that same time, I had a friend who was a sales rep for a big pharmaceutical company. The laws and policies had changed where reps couldn't wine and dine or take doctors on trips anymore. It became harder to book enough time with a doctor to educate them about a specific medication. It was common practice to fix your call report, showing you were calling on and seeing way more doctors than what the rep was actually doing. My friend, who is honest and has high character in his personal life, adopted this practice. The result is that his company received bad data, but he was able to keep his job. Why were these people willing to lie? If management knew what was going on in the field, they might adjust their techniques to improve getting in front of doctors. But with bad data, they were more likely to continue the same processes that don't work. As for the reps, I'm sure they all look at themselves as good, honest folks. Yet many people in the industry at the time 
became okay with doctoring their call reports? Why were they willing to set aside their character and principles at work when they would not do this in their personal life? Today, I realize this kind of behavior comes from fear and a lack of trust within the culture. In 2010, I was waiting for a flight from Las Vegas after attending the SEMA show. I had begun attending the show in 1993 when I was working for a pickup accessories manufacturer. I reflected on my disappointment in this year's conference as we awaited our flight home. The show seemed to be focused on the pursuit of more. More sales, more employees, more vendors, more products, more, more, more. Jeff Van Lanningham, our company president, gave me a copy of the book Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea. It was a book about company culture. I was very grateful for the gift, not realizing it would become the second spark for Real Truck's renewed, game-changing adventure. How to Fail at Creating Culture Failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Henry Ford A few years earlier, in 2008, we had attempted to improve our company culture. We had grown into a multi-million dollar company, but for me, it was becoming hard to go to work. It seemed like, while every direction of the company was pushing forward full steam, I had lost the knowledge of why we were pushing so hard. Real Truck's function as a company was that it had become an easy place to buy truck accessories online, and I was becoming rich because of it. Growing up a poor kid, I had always wanted to have some money. But getting rich because Real Truck was a place to buy truck accessories online didn't seem very fulfilling. Getting rich wasn't my true purpose, and I felt a bit empty inside. I looked at profit like the blood in the human body. It was required for life, but it did not give the body a purpose, a reason to exist. What was Real Truck's purpose? Why did Real Truck exist beyond selling truck parts? What should it be? Jeff Van Lanningham had been asking me, what makes Real Truck unique? What's different with Real Truck compared to everyone else who sells pickup accessories online? What's Real Truck's purpose? Why does Real Truck exist? That prompted me to ask myself, why did I exist? I reflected on our younger college days and my earlier goal of wanting to be useful above all else. I couldn't give him a clear answer on why Real Truck existed. It seemed a good time to figure out Real Truck's purpose besides just selling pickup accessories. That in itself was clearly not enough for me and probably the people I worked with. Don't get me wrong, up to this point as a company, I had accomplished some amazing things. Selling one, two, four, six, and then eight million dollars online, moving into bigger facilities, winning an innovation award, and more. Certainly, we couldn't have foreseen the success we had up to this point. Day after day, year after year, it, it just happened. There was a time a company flew in on a jet to see Real Truck and offered to buy us. We were developing some really cool tools on the website. But why? For the sake of making money didn't hold enough depth for me. I racked my brain on why Real Truck existed. Jeff helped transform Real Truck from being a pickup accessories company that sells online to an e-commerce company that happens to sell pickup accessories. He taught us that if we want to be good at e-commerce, we shouldn't be following companies in our industry. Rather, we should follow companies that were good at e-commerce. Jeff gave me a list of e-commerce companies to watch and called out Zappos.com as being one to look at closely. They were on their way to selling a billion dollars worth of shoes online, had a crazy fun work environment, and they weren't the cheapest place to buy shoes. That intrigued me. But they were starting with money and clearly were run by a genius who sold his last company for $240 million and who had gone to an Ivy League school. They came out of Silicon Valley and had lots of smart people who were very talented. We were just some good old hard-working North Dakota folks who learned as we went. Jamestown has about 16,000 people. There weren't too many folks willing to relocate there. 
Over time, when people asked where we were from, I learned to say Jamestown, North Dakota, 90 miles west of Fargo. That was quicker than saying Jamestown, North Dakota, and then having them ask, where's that? Even though I felt we were out of our league, we started learning everything about Zappos and discovered they had core values that they practiced at work. Pondering everything I was learning, it struck me what I wanted Real Truck's mission to be. To make people's lives and vehicles better. I pitched the idea to Jeff and Justin Deltner. They looked at me funny. They conceded that some of the more useful products we sold did make people's vehicles better. But how could a company also really make people's lives better? I didn't know. But I did know we had the right people in place to give it a try. We kicked out our new mission to the entire company. I could sense their reluctance to embrace it, but I figured no one thought Real Truck was a good idea when we started, and this would be no different. Jeff and I then crafted Real Truck's core values. Be helpful first. Be fun and productive. Continue to grow. Unity with individuality. Each core value had a paragraph explaining the value. We then had them printed, hung them on the walls, got a copy on everyone's desk, and spent the next 18 months wondering why no one was embracing them. Real Truck's Original Core Values Be helpful first. Helping others is the cornerstone of any successful business or personal philosophy. Real Truck strives to implement this on a daily basis. Whether offering help to our customers or to each other, we go the extra mile to ensure success. In this changing economy, it is important that we stand out from our competitors, and we do this by providing outstanding service by keeping this value at the forefront of our efforts. It has been said that the bottom line is all that matters, but in reality, the core of all that we do as people, whether at work or in our personal lives, is our willingness to help and be helped. It is part of the fabric of our society, and it greatly affects the bottom line. A helpful attitude and spirit will make the difference between thriving or just barely making it. Be fun and productive. These two don't have to be a mutually exclusive deal. In fact, when done right, they complement each other quite nicely. We want Real Truck to be an enjoyable experience for the people who shop with us, the people who we do business with, and the people who work here. If you enjoy what you are doing, it will show. Our office features a strict no-tie policy that has never been violated. We also are looking forward to the annual Real Truck Olympics, featuring such prestigious events as the chair twirling contest and the paper airplane flight contest. Have fun, smile, and be productive are not just cutesy cliches, but actually principles we implement every day. Continue to grow. We are not talking about the bottom line sense of growth, although that would be nice too. We realize that everything changes. What works today might not work tomorrow. Is there a way this can be done better? We welcome feedback from our customers, suppliers, and our staff. Each suggestion is an opportunity to improve how we work and how we live. The greatest barrier to growth is closed mindedness, and we refuse to let what we think we know stand in the way of our development. Unity with Individuality A company is nothing more than the sum of the people that make it work. These people, being united in direction and purpose, can do much more than just contribute to the bottom line. Their dedication, passion, and uniqueness enrich the lives of everyone around them. These diversified personalities all work toward a common goal while having an enduring respect for each other's distinct qualities. This respect makes a job a career, and a career more like just having fun. As you can see, Jeff and I did a fairly decent job writing them. They are good values most would want to have. But in getting them into the culture, we failed utterly. Back to the whiteboard. I was shocked that no one was embracing our new core values. I thought, 
You are empowered with these values. Go and do great things to support our mission of making people's lives and vehicles better. Eighteen months into our failed experiment, most folks didn't know what the values were, even though they were plastered everywhere. I was utterly discouraged. But, fortunately, we did not allow this to be the end of the story. One of the lessons I learned along the way is that sometimes if an idea fails, many times, it pays to repackage it and try it again. Back to the book Jeff gave me at the beginning of the chapter. While returning from SEMA Las Vegas in 2010, I noticed that Jeff and I weren't sitting together. It was a one-stop flight followed by a 90-minute drive home. Normally, when we travel together, we can talk for hours on end. However, this trip, sitting by myself, I began reading the Delivering Happiness book. I was amazed, inspired, and couldn't put it down. I read it nonstop all the way home. Tony, the author of Delivering Happiness, created a billion-dollar company, and he bet it all on culture. He believed that if they could get the culture right, everything else would come into place. And he was right. Why couldn't we do this right here in North Dakota at Real Truck? Zabos doesn't have anything Real Truck couldn't have. Yes, they started with some money. Yes, they had a great leader. But Tony bet it on culture. Tony also had the experience of creating a company that he lost passion for and sold it. At Zappos, he didn't want to go down the same path as his first company. I didn't want to sell Real Truck and start over. Could we try again? Could we double down and get the culture going in the right direction? What would it take? I wanted Real Truck to be useful, and I wanted Real Truck to make people's lives better. We had failed at our first attempt to instill core values in the company. I thought that if we did some of the things Zappos does, we also could have a higher purpose, one that makes people's lives better, that is rewarding to those who work at Real Truck and those who do business with Real Truck. Becoming rich was not fulfilling. Selling more pickup accessories for the sake of selling more was not fulfilling. Making Real Truck better for our employees, staff, and partners, now that was an attractive thought. Could we be an example or even an icon for how a company should treat customers, staff, and partners? Could we do it right here in North Dakota? That seemed like an impossible goal given we tried once and utterly failed before. So I slept on it. On Fire, Culture 2.0 I woke up the next morning totally on fire, but it was a cautious and controlled flame deep within my inner being. What did we have to lose? Nothing. What did we have to gain? Everything. Tony and Zappos did it. Why couldn't we? I did some internet searching and found what I thought were the books that influenced Tony and Zappos. I ordered Good to Great, Tribal Leadership, and How Great Companies Get Their Mojo. I went on a book-reading binge of all binges. I read those books and more, anything I could find, on making us better. I ordered those three books along with Delivering Happiness for Jeff and Justin. I insisted they read them, even while they were at work. Those four books became the pillars for what we were about to create. They would be the books I would give to anyone working at Real Truck and anyone wanting to make their business better. If you enter my office today, you will notice multiple copies of my favorite books, which I encourage employees to take and read. They say hindsight is twenty twenty. Now I can see what went wrong with our first attempt and what went right with our second. Why Companies Fail at Culture Here is a list of reasons why companies try and ultimately fail at establishing a winning culture. When referring to core values, principles, and guiding principles, I mean the same thing. 1. Fail to get input from everyone at the company. 2. Put them on the wall before they are practiced and understood by the employees. Three. Fail to show how people's personal values 
tie into and align with the company's values. 4. Don't reward, recognize, hire, or fire by their company's values. 5. Skill first, rather than character and culture fit first, hiring policy. 6. Fail to call out examples of practicing the company's guiding principles. 7. They have good ideas, but not the freedom to take risks, which means that they're bad at executing ideas or even attempting to. 8. Fail to encourage and provide resources for employees and managers to have gatherings to ask questions on how they can practice their values better. 9. Fail to be transparent with what they are doing as a company. When leadership isn't open and transparent, Neither are the troops. It's hard to work as a team or unit if everyone has their own private agenda. 10. Fail at helping each and every employee see how what they do fits into the bigger picture, mission, and objectives of the company. 11. Don't base decisions on values and principles first, but rather let profit motive trump any principle any time. Have policies that are in conflict with a principle the company has, with no desire to change the policy. 13. Don't use principles to question why they do what they do or don't do. 14. Have a top-down mentality. Nothing in the values empowers employees to question management or policies. 15. Don't spend enough time or resources learning how to practice principles. 16. Let profit motive overrule a principle or value repeatedly. This one is listed twice because it's the biggest offender of a bad culture. Guiding Principles 2.0 Rollout Process If you don't see what you want to be, be what you want to see. If you don't hear what you want to hear, say what you want to hear. Peggy Martin I was inspired again and on fire with purpose. But it's difficult to maintain that level of excitement, so I needed to act quickly. We decided we were going to bet the farm on the idea that if we could get the culture right at Real Truck, everything else would fall into place. Jeff and Justin were on board. My first action was to email the entire company and ask them what their personal values were. What are the principles they live by or try to live by? What are the values they have or aspire to have? If we were to be successful, it was important that everyone in the company could see how their personal principles, values, lined up with the company's principles. I also asked everyone to write a list of things that they were grateful for and to share that with me and the others. As the answers came back, I began creating a list. As I looked at it, it made me smile. It was clear folks valued learning, growing, and wanting to be helpful. All really good values. Even if they were worded slightly differently, we grouped like values. Then we came up with quick, to-the-point names for each of the groups. Below are some of the real examples and the guiding principles they were in sync with. Deliver more. Treat everyone the way you'd want to be treated by them if they were in your shoes. Don't ever let someone feel like they're being taken for granted. Leave it better than you found it. Do the best I can and always try my hardest. Don't be a jackass. Be considerate. Anything worth doing is worth doing right the first time. Be helpful to others. Next level, be helpful to others and remain anonymous. Be nice to everyone I meet. Be helpful whenever I can. It makes me feel good and seems to be the right thing to do. Don't ever let someone feel taken for granted. Give love, kindness, tolerance, rather than demand them. Having strong patience. Help others and expect nothing in return. Help people. Do things even if it is inconvenient. 
Love. Share a friendly smile, welcoming that person or spreading the gift of love, as love has many meanings. Be a good friend. Be helpful when someone needs help. Work hard. With patience and determination, you will eventually succeed and be greatly rewarded. Transparency rocks. Be a good listener. Shut up and don't judge. Be understanding because we are all human with lessons to be learned from experiences and mistakes. Tough love means telling the truth when you know it needs to be told. Always look for my mistakes in any situation. Patience. Be open to truthful criticism. Be a good communicator. Be open with more people. I want people to know the real me more. Be honest with people. Trust is really hard to earn back once you've shown people you are not honest. Be understanding. Be respectful. Be real. Improve. Continue to learn new things so I can be a better me. Never stop learning. There is always more to learn, and it can help make you a better person. Always keep an open mind and be willing to listen and learn. As much as you think you know, you can always grow from the people around you. Ask myself what opinion or belief could I be wrong about today. Continue to be a spiritual seeker, spiritual apprentice. There is always more to learn, and it can help make you a better person. Stay strong even when times are tough. Stay open-minded. Be a better me. Focus on the big picture and don't get caught up in tunnel vision. Grow in helpfulness and understanding. Leave it better than you found it. Be happy most of the time. Be happy. Start each day new and fresh. Things relating to being happy we placed here. They could also go under be humble. The reason they were placed under improve is because learning and improving are strong ways to increase one's happiness baseline. Leave what you cannot change in the past and move forward. Try to learn from everyone. Every man is my teacher. Some teach what I want to be, and others teach what I don't want to be. Be the best I can be. Be the best grandma and mother and mother-in-law I can be. Try to be a positive example, or more specifically, not to be a negative example. Try to be a patient learner. Take risks. Be understanding, because we are all human with lessons to be learned from experiences and mistakes. Don't be afraid to try new things. You may fail, but there is value in an attempt, even if the result is not what you had hoped, or you might find a new love talent or activity. Do some amazing things. Be determined, because sometimes hanging in there a little longer is the difference in success or failure. Dedication. Staying on course in a situation and never giving up. Don't be afraid to try new things. Try new things. Take more calculated risks. Be willing to try more things. Realize failure is part of being successful. Include fun. Laugh at yourself. Everyone else is. Be happy most of the time. Have fun. Not take myself too seriously. Be more funny. Laugh more. Have a good time with whatever I'm doing. Partake in more fun activities. Make more time to have fun. Try to have fun at everything I do. Try more fun things. Smile more than I do. Experience joy and happiness more often. Be humble. Give back and give forward. Giving back because lots of people have helped me along the way and giving forward because a good leader helps others be even more successful down the road. Giving back. Eliminate the phrase, that's not my job, from your vocabulary. Catch others doing things right. Always find the good in any situation and find the best of everyone. Always look for my mistakes in any situation. Not be mean when I'm having a bad day. Appreciation. Taking just a couple of seconds out of the day to say thank you to a deserving someone. Are people underachieving or am I overexpecting? Be a good sport, win or lose. Lead others by example and try to follow the most moral path. Say please and thank you. Treat everyone around you very well.
Some of the statements we received were, always keep an open mind and be willing to listen and learn. And, as much as you think you know, you can always grow from the people around you. These statements could qualify as principles under a variety of groups. Transparency rocks, improve, take risks, and be humble. Jeff and I were both marketers. We decided to roll them out as guiding principles rather than core values. We hoped the principles would guide how we made decisions, worked, and played together. We wanted them to guide our actions with everything we did at Real Truck. Of course, we needed to learn to do this as we went along. We were not seeking perfection, but rather progress. Moving more and more in the direction of principles first, it was decided early on we did not want to put the new guiding principles on the wall the first year. We wanted to get better at practicing them. After we grouped everyone's personal values and principles into six buckets, we gave them master group names. We developed a paragraph that describes each principle in more detail. This took a little time as Jeff, Justin, and I debated passionately about how the long descriptions for each principle were exactly worded. I think we somehow knew the long descriptions might be hard to change down the road. We rolled out one principle at a time. Each time we released a principle, the announcement ended with this. If you have this principle or wish to have it, then Real Truck will be a great place to grow and work. We will hire, reward, and recognize people by this. If you do not have or aspire to have this principle, then Real Truck will not be a good experience for you. Our mission is simple to make people's lives and vehicles better. We do this by practicing our guiding principles. These are the fundamentals we strive to live and work by. Deliver more. Delivering more than expected is our first guiding principle. The status quo is never enough. We have a duty to go above and beyond what is expected to fulfill unrecognized needs create surprise and serendipity, leading to a lasting emotional impact and connection. Delivering more creates smiles and memorable experiences. To be exceptional, we must constantly deliver more and find creative ways to do this with our customers, co-workers, and partners. We must be determined to do this to an ever-increasing degree. A helpful spirit and highly considerate actions are the essential requirements to deliver more. Transparency rocks. We value strong and lasting relationships. It is critical for relationship building to have effective, open, and honest communication. Communication is always difficult in any organization. Being transparent eliminates guesswork and misunderstanding. We want everyone to always try to go to any length to encourage transparent, thorough, complete, and effective communication. It is important because everyone needs to understand how each of us and our teams connect to the big picture and what our mission is. Clear and honest communication guided by transparency allows us to create stronger, lasting relationships and positive emotional experiences with our customers, partners, teams, and each other. Work takes on new meaning. Instead of a task or chore, we are now doing something for a friend. We are able to transmit a genuine attitude of caring that translates into service made visible. Improve. With an open mind and a passionate spirit, pursue innovation and ongoing improvement. Let's wrap our hearts and minds around the idea of ongoing change. Create it, drive it, embrace it, inspire it, and lead it. Status quo is the curse of business, and we want to be extraordinary. Constant change is something we seek. Not only do we seek change, we want to be the creators of it. Companies can copy our policies and ideas, but they can't copy our people or our spirit. Innovation must come from everywhere in our company. Find ways to do more with less, and remember, good enough is the enemy of the great. 
Each of us need to spend time learning new things personally and professionally for ongoing improvement. Working hard and putting in extra effort is what creates great transformation. We should be adventurous and always be striving to make something better. Take risks. Don't be afraid to take risks. Leadership doesn't come from authority. Rather, the ability to help others achieve more than they thought they could. You have the authority and power to take risks and make mistakes. It is okay to make mistakes, provided we learn from them. Don't accept status quo, or that's how we've always done it. We should be adventurous and always be striving to make something better. We want to be creative and unconventional with our solutions. An entrepreneurial spirit in taking risks is needed and is what allows us the possibility of being exceptional. Include fun. Don't just have fun, create it. We want Real Truck to be an enjoyable and memorable experience for our customers, partners, and each other. In our pursuit of happiness, we want to add fun and excitement to all areas of our company, from how we design our web pages, conduct meetings, to our interaction with people. We strive to practice our guiding principles. We believe the happier and more enjoyable we are, the more productive we can be. Always remembering that we take our responsibility serious, but not ourselves. Be humble. We must be respectful of everyone and treat everyone just like we would want to be treated if we were in their position. There can't be anything that needs to be done that is beneath me. Our successes are important, but we must not let that go to our head. We should not praise ourselves, but rather let our customers, partners, and co-workers do it for us. An ethic of giving back and forward is highly valued. Being grateful for what we have, not taking anything for granted, being of service, helping others reach their fullest potential, setting up others for future success, and making the future better is the spirit of being humble. When praised, we should give thanks and pass on credit. When we fall short, we should accept responsibility by being willing to correct and learn from it. Those six principles would change and propel Real Truck into a company with a greater purpose and passion than I could have ever imagined. Evangelistic customers, employees, and partners. There were loads of fun, innovation galore, and a spirit of commitment and teamwork most would come to love. It was always a work in progress. We were not perfect. We would go on to change the game in the pickup accessories world. It was humbling. <laughs>